Hey guys, just letting you know I have launched my webcomic. It is called Dormant. It's like a, a supernatural horror thriller type type deal. First two chapters are available on Webtoons. Uh, the link in the description. If you would like to read them, check them out. You can leave a comment giving me some feedback. Uh, I'm hoping to release a chapter uh, once a month at least. Uh, yeah, yeah, cool. Awesome. Hey folks, I uh, just got back from the Kilimanjaro base camp. I wanted to do this this fun little thing where I review the climber while climbing. It was really fun, Re really cool time. Uh, we got to the summit, I gave my final verdict on the manga. But what ended up happening was on the way down, our cameraman who was filming my review uh, fucking died. Like we were on the way down and he just slipped and fell off Kilimanjaro and, and of course took the camera with him. So all that shit was for nothing. So, uh, mmm. Th thought I would do something fun, but I guess I guess the universe had other plans. Uh, so here we are with a, a more normal review. In case you haven't noticed, I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. I don't fit in, and I don't want to fit in. Have you ever seen me without this stupid hat on? That's weird. <laughs> I'm not wearing this the whole time, it's hot in here. The Climber, or as it is more often uh, referred to as Koku no Hito, but I speak English, we're gonna be calling it The Climber, is a sports drama? <laughs> We'll, we'll call it that, I suppose? That was written and illustrated by Shinichi Sakamoto and was released between 2007 and 2011 in Weekly Young Jump. There was another writer at the start of the series, Yo Yoshiro Nabeda. Uh, we don't really care about him, I'll get into why, but he is, he is credited. This story follows a young Gerard Way. <laughs> Mori is an angsty teen uh, who doesn't really like people. He doesn't enjoy being around them. What he does enjoy is the climb. Something people are quick to learn when he joins a fresh new high school and demonstrates his power. It draws the attention of other students and teachers who are also interested in rock climbing. And despite Mori's issues with socializing and talking to people, they convince him to join the wall climbing club. And man, these kids have, have big ambitions for the wall climbing club. They're gonna they're gonna go around climbing mountains and entering tournaments and <laughs> you got you got some rivalries going on. You got a bit of potential love interests. I want you to take everything I just said and toss it into the meat grinder because that's what this manga does. You see, you know that writer I mentioned? He was the guy. He was the guy writing the series. He ended up quitting, and instead of just letting the series get canceled or whatever, Sakamoto sort of, you know, pulled up his suspenders and said, yeah, fine, I'll do it myself. He decided to take this foundation of a climbing manga we had and make it something completely different. So, the real story of The Climber follows Mori, this very socially isolated person who really only feels alive when he is climbing. So he climbs, he climbs mountains, and he sets his sights on bigger mountains. But his issues with his anxiety and depression cause a lot of roadblocks for him, as climbing is, is very much a social sport, like especially when you're going on these big long treks to scale huge mountains. You gotta, you gotta work together with the team, and he doesn't like to do that. He considers himself a solo climber. He likes being on his own, climbing on his own, he's perfectly content with that. However, that's not really how this works. So he is going to have to overcome a lot of issues if he wants to achieve his goal. And what is his ultimate goal? It's not Everest, which of course is the tallest mountain in the world, it's actually the second, the runner-up, Mr. K2 over here. You see, K2 is a pr pr pretty easy mountain, of course. Hundreds of people have done it. I've done it. It's no big deal. However, the eastern side of it? Hell no, man. Never been touched before. And that is Mori's ultimate goal. But because of all the things I've already mentioned, it is not going to be very easy for him. So we follow him throughout a pretty sizable portion of his life and and just seeing how he how he deals with it. His training to eventually reach K2, uh, you know, working on himself a little bit, because he, he needs to do a lot of work on himself to actually be a functioning member of society. And yeah, so who, who knows what he might find along the way. Uh, as, as the wise poet once said, uh, there's always going to be another mountain. Uh, I'm always going to want to make it. <laughs> it's always going to be an uphill battle. Sometimes you're going to have to lose. Um, will Mori lose? You'll have to read to find out. <laughs> okay, so yeah. 
Um, the whole, the whole school thing. Uh, holy shit. <laughs> this series has the most insane shift I think I've ever seen in my life. It's pretty common for manga, you know, to start as one thing, uh, but as maybe they weren't doing so well in the ratings, maybe they just wanted to change stuff up, and it sort of reinvents itself. We see this a lot with, you know, comedy and action manga. But here we have what was set up to be a pretty generic, it was interesting, but generic sports series, high school sports series. You know, we have our, our edgy main character, Mori, within, you know, he has mentors, he has, you know, Know, people who are slowly becoming his friends. He has rivals. He's got, he's got a bunch of goofy rivals. But because of drama behind the scenes, of course, things get switched up. And it happens in such a comically fast-paced way. It's like Sakamoto just really didn't like anything that, that the other guy was doing. So it all gets thrown out the window. However, it, it somehow worked in a way that made a lot of sense. Like, it does happen very quickly, like it's so obvious when another writer took over, but he somehow does it in a way that feels coherent and like something that would actually happen. So from that start, which again, I did find it interesting, we are learning all about this sport, about climbing, and in fact, that's probably the most value that this part gives to the series, is sort of as an introduction to everything, into the kind of person that Mori is, and you know, the stuff he wants to do, which is climb. But after that, it really just focuses in on Mori, cuts pretty much everyone else, all these other characters, just out of the picture, and hones in on him and his journey. And what a journey it is. Of course, this guy is not what you would really consider normal. He does have a lot of mental issues and problems going on. He has a very difficult time just socializing in general. He feels most at home when he's climbing mountains. But like I said, that costs a lot of money to get equipment and to, you know, set up wherever you need to go. If he wants to go on these big missions, he's gonna need funding and he's gonna need to do stuff to get that funding. And yeah, we just follow his entire journey and it is, it is some engrossing stuff. It's very, very well told. Of course, you spend a lot of this manga actually climbing the mountains with Mori, and they are absolutely ruthless. I would consider this, as much as it is a drama, a survival manga. Through what the characters are going through, you really feel how ruthless th this sport is. It takes extensive planning, like a single wrong move could cost you or your partner's life, and the series is constantly reminding you of that. As the stakes are super high, things are always going wrong, characters need to adapt to their situation, much like it is in real life. And so, you know, pairing these intense and suspenseful situations with, you know, Mori's growth as a character is super, super fascinating. And one thing that makes it so interesting is the, the very unconventional storytelling style that Sakamoto often uses. A large portion of this manga does not have have any dialogue at all. Yes, there is a significant amount of visual storytelling on display, as well as visual metaphors. And we are constantly getting flashbacks into Mori's life, filling in the gaps of places we might not have seen him in, and it all sort of ties together into, you know, the current things that he is going through, the current things he is learning. I'm not usually like a huge artsy-fartsy guy, you know, like I enjoy my themes, I, I enjoy, you know, not being spoon-fed everything. But a lot of the times I don't really care about these, you know, big, massive, stupid metaphors. And here they are very massive and, and very abstract at times. However, I think they work exceptionally well. It's very easy to understand what Sakamoto was going for in most of these scenes. But, you know, it's not spoon-fed. You, you, do, you do some connecting yourself. And I just think it works exceptionally well. There's a scene with an orchestra man. Holy fucking shit. Oh, oh my god. And it's kind of hard to talk about anything else <laughs> when it comes to this series. You know, this is definitely the type of thing you could do like a, a five hour deep dive analysis into, uh, but like, I, I'm really at like a loss for words on what to say next. In terms of the ending, I mean the, like the final chunk of this series, I could not put down. It was just so thrilling and monumental. And you know, it's one of those endings that gave me goosebumps. Uh, I really, 
really loved every second of it. In terms of characters, again, there's not really much to say here because this story is so focused on Mori, it doesn't really have any other major character arcs. Yes, there are characters who are important and important to Mori's life, but we don't really see much of any of them or learn a ton about them, which works for this series because they're never the focus. This is Mori's story. It's about how these people affect him, uh, how he feels about these people, who they are and what arcs they're going through is kind of an afterthought. But I will mention a few. Uh, there's Masao, who was uh, Mori's teacher in high school, who sort of like at the start of the series introduces him to the world of climbing, uh, you know, get, get, gets him into it, I guess you could say. And, you know, some events play out that make him very impactful on Mori's life. So for the short time that he was there, I thought he, I thought he was a great presence. Now, once Mori, like, starts climbing more mountains, becomes a bit more renowned, uh, yeah, you got this this goofball Takemura who sort of like looks up and idolizes uh, Mori. And he is very similar to Mori in a lot of ways, but not in a good way. I'll say, I'll say that. <laughs> There's Hana, a, uh, a very important character. Like she's an interesting character because she's one of the ones that we, we barely spend any time with in the story. Uh, however, you really seem to understand her just from all the visual storytelling going on. But what about all those other characters that the old writer was introducing? <laughs> All the fucking stupid rivals and love interests and all that nonsense. So Sakamoto does not get rid of these guys. Like, it's not like he never references them again. He definitely does. But you can tell he did not like <laughs> these characters. Because the directions they all go in are absolutely insane. And again, there are ways that I think work extremely well. One of them in particular comes back in a way that not only did I not expect, but I thought was like absolutely masterfully done. But yeah, it's just still so funny to me, the just insane shift that this story takes. So yeah, nice, I say like complimentary cast of characters. Uh, none of them are huge standouts, of course, besides Mori. And that's okay, because it's Mori's story and it doesn't try to be anything beyond that. So as for the art, uh, starts off a little goofy, not gonna lie, I was not digging the style at first. It's the next man, the fucking next. I don't know. I can put up with a lot of nonsense, okay? But when you, you make necks looking like this, you, you start to lose me. I don't know what it is. Long necks always sort of bothered me and stuff. Why would you, why would you do that? Why would you have a neck that long? That doesn't make any sense. However, once Sakamoto takes over as the main writer, the art seemingly has a gigantic leap in quality. And from that point, everything we get is pretty breathtaking. And it's kind of weird, because you would think that if he's taking over the writing, he would have like, a bit less time to focus on the art. Especially with this being a fucking weekly series. Emphasis on that. Holy shit. Yeah, everything's just really top-notch here. The paneling, the composition, the character designs, you know, just, just the way the characters look, very detailed. But of course, the real star of the show are the mountains. Like, <sighs> obviously, you know, it's all real landscapes based on real pictures and stuff, but that doesn't make it any less impressive. And of course, there's the whole creative flair to everything in the visual metaphors going on all the time, which lead to just some very, very enthralling sequences where Sakamoto is just, just going crazy, man. And it's definitely some of the best manga art out there. Um, so yeah, if you couldn't tell, I thought this series was phenomenal. Uh, it, I was expecting it to be good, and it did win, like, the big community vote I did. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, it still managed to exceed my expectations. Uh, wow. Again, a very unconventional series. I don't know if it's gonna be for everyone because of that. And I think the start of the series, where it's more of a generic high school sports thing, can turn some people off. But not only would I highly recommend it to everyone, I would also highly recommend if you were turned off by that first little bit, just keep going. It, like, the big shift happens like two, three volumes in, um, and it's, it's a very quick read after that. So yeah, 10. Unfortunately, though, there's no English release. Uh, it's short enough that, like, I, I really hope that there is potential for an English release in the future. I don't know. I don't see why not. Why are you sleeping on this one, Viz? Anyway, yeah, for alternate recommendations, uh, I, I don't know. I, I've never really read anything like this, I don't, I don't think. And that'll do it. Thank you all so much for watching. You can leave your thoughts on The Climber and this review in the comments down below. This is it, guys. November is going to be the final month for this channel. 
If you're confused by what I just said, I, I don't know what to say. There's people still wondering, like, what do you mean? What's going on? Watch this video. Watch this video I made, uh, like, a couple months ago. I have, like, maybe three more, three or four more videos planned. And then, then we'll be moving on. I'll be, whenever, whenever I make the new channel, I'll, be, I'll, I'll give you guys all the details or whatever. But yeah, it's, it's exciting times. Uh, and yeah, with that, uh, peace out. We, we got a new video coming soon.